Today in Toby Fox we'll be teaching you how to set up a DHCP server so that way you don't have to manually configure each IP address for each device on your network. The documentation used will be from the official Ubuntu website and there contains a lot of good information of how to configure a DNS server um, having the DNS server first before you create your DHCP server. So let's begin. All right, so the first step is to pull up your terminal and find an empty IP address for your network. So for our case scenario, we have a network based on the 10.0.0.0 scheme. So for example, I went into my terminal, pinged a specific IP address that was free. So for my case, it was 25. But now two fives taken. So if I go uh, 10.0.026, that address should be empty. Yeah, that address is not reachable. So from there, I would basically assign this server that static IP address. Uh, when you're dealing with any kind of server, you want to make sure that you assign the server a static IP address that's going to be accessible to your IP scheme and network. So after we find an IP address in the terminal, you want to go ahead and open up the wired connection information. We go to wired settings and we open up the cog wheel for network. We go under to IVP version four and we want to do manual and then enter in the address of this specific device along with your subnet mask that's appropriate for your network and then your gateway. So that would be the gateway of your router for the LAN access. Then from here, we do want to disable IPv6 because we're not going to be using that scheme. After you do that, you want to click on apply. And then what you do is you turn off your wired connection. If this case, it's, it's a Wi-Fi connection, you want to do the same thing. And then you want to turn on your connection again, so. Go ahead and turn it back on, and then as you can see, you should be getting internet. Alternatively, you could also ping Google to make sure that your new virtual machine is getting the appropriate IP address. Once we have that assigned as a static IP address, we want to go ahead and enter in the following command. sudo apt install isc dash d h c p server and i will leave all the commands in the description below so after that we want to go ahead and press enter enter in the password for your machine and then it will start the installation process you will be asked if you want to install the program and make any changes for this specific program to your computer you want to go ahead and type in y for yes and press enter and within a minute, it should install and complete. Do take note that this server setup video will consist of a virtual machine that's already been configured and installed on a Windows device. So just take note that it is a pre-configured system. I'm assuming you know how to create a virtual machine and install Ubuntu on a virtual machine or a specific device. So that's where we're starting. Now that the DHCP server is installed, we want to go ahead and make some changes to the following file. So we want to type up sudo nano and then the following pathway, which will be in the description. After we have the server installed, we want to type in the following command sudo nano and then the following pathway. From here, you want to make specific changes to the configuration file. I will show you what you need to configure in the next slide. The following information needs to be entered into the file. So as you can see, we added the default lease time, the max lease time, and then the subnet with the information about the range of IPs that the server will be giving out. So for our case scenario, we're on the subnet of the 10.0.0.0 scheme of the subnet of or CIDR notation of uh, forward slash 20. 
And you can see this net mask right here. The range, however, is only from 10.0.5.1 to 10.0.5.2. Five, four. Then we want to add the following information about our router. So our router gateway is 10.0.0.1. And then we need to enter in our domain name servers. So for our case scenario, we did create the DNS servers already in the last session. So I have these IPs designated for the DNS servers that I created. And then the domain name. So we're still using the same name as the last session, which is telefoxcorp.com. And then you want to save it by pressing Control x and then pressing Y, Enter, for accepting the changes. Next, we want to edit the following file. So we want to go ahead and type up sudo nano and then the following pathway. From here, we want to make sure we add the interface that we are using. So for our case scenario, to find the Ethernet name, we need to install some net tools. So we will install the following net tools, which allows us to do ifconfig. Once we install the net tools, we want to go ahead and find our interface name. For that case scenario, we type up ifconfig. And as you can see at the top, IP address. This is the IP address of our system. And this is the name of the interface that we're going to be using. So we want to enter in this here inside of interfaces 4. So for my case scenario, it might be different from yours. So you just want to take note of that. And simply you could copy and paste it inside of interfaces version 4. And then you want to go ahead and click on Control X, Y for accepting the changes, and then save with Enter. Now we have to restart the service. To do that, we type up sudo system ctl restart, and then the name of the program. So isc dhcp server dot services. Now your DHCP server is up and running. Very simple to implement on a business network for free instead of having a Windows system where you paid $2,000 for the server. You could implement the DHCP server here on a Linux system for about the cost of whatever hardware that you're using. For our case scenario, the DHCP server in this Linux system would be connected to a switch that doesn't have DHCP activated or a router um, the reason why you don't want two dhcp servers on the same subnet and the same network is because it's going to be conflicting issues so for example if i want to pick up a uh, ip address from my windows system on the same network it's going to pick up the ip address from the router and not the linux system so this would only be useful if you're using dhcp with the Ubuntu system connected to a switch that will not be delegating different IP addresses for the network. So just take note of that because you can't really implement that on a network that already has a DHCP server, which is the router typically for most networks. But that's how it would be set up. Next we want to type up sudo apt install ufw to install the uncomplicated firewall. Now that we have that completed, every port on this device is now closed, so we want to open up DHCP port, so that way it allows that service to be delegated and active. Now that we have the program installed, we want to enable the firewall. So we type up sudo ufw enable. Next, we type up the following, sudo ufw allow and the port number. 
For our case scenario, for DHCP servers to work, you need port 67, 68 open. Now we want to check the status of the firewall to make sure that's the only ports that are open. So sudo ufw status. And as you can see, ports 67, 68 are open. Now we want to enter in the following command to update our system. So sudo apt update. It's actually for our case, sudo apt update. And this will update your directories and everything in the Ubuntu system. So that way, everything is prepared for the next step. The final step, before we implement any device on our business network or home network is to scan the device of any vulnerabilities and you can do that with Kali very simple operating system that will allow you to use nmap to scan your device or devices so of course as always we will enter the following command the command that we want to use is nmap dash lowercase s uppercase s dash uppercase a and then dash dash script with the following perimeters plus the ip of your system so for our case scenario that would be 10 0, 0, 25. and then we press enter to allow that system to be scanned of course you want to add sudo in the beginning to give it proper privileges this process could take up to 10 minutes depending on how fast your network is and the speed of your operating system so as you can see we scan the network and there is no vulnerabilities found it does say that we do have the oracle virtual box running but there's no ports that are open and no vulnerabilities found so this is what you want to do with every single device that you implement inside of your business or home network you want to make sure that it's scanned for any vulnerabilities and that it's patched with all the new updates to ensure that it's operating correctly. So let's how to set up a DHCP server using Ubuntu Linux. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and don't hesitate to contact Tilly Fox today.